Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm in the middle of a two-stroke project that happens to have a bad crankshaft. Now, if you remember back a few episodes ago, we made a couple of shop tools for pressing the crankshaft apart and for truing the crankshaft. I've not yet used those, but it seems now I'm going to get to use them. However, I'm still missing one tool. For doing this the more I think about it and I need a alignment tool for pressing the crankshaft back together so that's today's episode shop made tool crankshaft alignment jig stay tuned So a while back we made this plate so we can put our crankshaft on it and press it apart. But what I need to do is be able to realign these webs when I press the new one back together. So what I've got for this is this 8 inch round steel disc A36 and it's a half an inch thick. And I got this inch and a quarter solid steel. And what the plan is on this is to make three separate bars that are adjustable to fit different size crankshafts. First step, let's find center. And it is indeed eight inches. And this is not going to be super critical. That's going to mark our center point of this disc. So my next step here is I want to measure a few crankshafts and kind of get an overall um, width of the web between this and like a 450. The stuff I normally use. Like 3.71 inches. This is probably going to be the smallest crankshaft I'm going to do. So I'll round that down to three and a half inches and we'll divide that by two. It's going to be at Here's a 250 crank from a KX. You know, 414. Definitely want to go a little bigger. So let's go four and a half. That'll give us plenty of room. Might be too big actually. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So we have a little bit of clearance. 440. We'll go 220 for our next ring. What this is going to be is a representative between the two crankshafts. And this bar is going to be, what we're going to end up doing is drilling this bar like off center. So it will pivot. I'm going to find a spot where it will accommodate both crankshafts. Now this inner ring, we went a little bit smaller than this crankshaft, so we know we'll touch there. And we've got a ton of room on the other side. So this will accommodate the 250 crankshaft. 
the 125 crankshaft and we could actually go a little bit bigger to accommodate potentially a 450 crankshaft as well so this is my plan I think this is going to be a good spot to mount these it overlaps this line and it will open up big enough for the larger crankshaft and it'll open up even bigger for even a larger crankshaft I won't be able to do anything too too much smaller but I generally don't do 80s or anything like that so this looks like this is going to be a perfect place for this since we're going to put three of these rods we need to divide this 360 degree circle into 120 degree angles. So we know where our first one's going to go. And we can just download a little template off of the internet and print it out. It'll show you 120 degrees. This is not like super precision precise, but yeah, 172. So this is where we're going to put our two rings. Now what we need to do is figure out the depth of these. And I'm going with, obviously this would be to the top of the crankshaft. Now you have to add this width again because that's how much of the pin that's going to be sticking out. So it'd be two inches to here. Add an extra inch for when this is expanded. When we're trying to press this pin, I'd say three inches would probably be a good even measurement. I'm going to go a little over and then machine them down. First thing I want to do is square off this one end so it sits flat against the plate. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this is going to be our basic layout. What we need to do is get some holes drilled for our bolts. So I did a couple of test punches just to see where this would line up properly. And if I go on the inner punch, the bolt will go. This sleeve will accommodate the smaller crankshaft and accommodate the larger crankshaft and then some. So I think that's about where I'm going to go. And what I've got is 2.66 inches off the center. So I will do the same here. So the bolts I got are 4 inch long, uh, 5 16 by 24 thread pitch. They are a little long and I will shorten them. The drill I'm going to use for this tap is 17 64 So let's go over to the drill press and get these three holes drilled.
well all the drilling and machine work are done on the locating pins in the plate and I gotta tell you with a small jeweler's lathe it's a tedious and long process but it actually does a fairly decent job so our next step now is we're going to drop our bolts in and see how much we have to cut off they are a little bit long because they are four inch Forgot my washer. That would have been catastrophic. Not really. So we'll just grind these off now. Now we gotta get our center hole drilled. Well, there you have it another successful shop made tool this turned out to be a lot of work uh, simply just because of the lack of proper tools had I had a bigger drill press bigger lathe plasma cutter a bunch of other things this would have been a lot a lot easier but I'm happy the way it turned out it's pretty solid this thing weighs a ton and it should be good for pressing these crankshafts back together keeping them in alignment now if you're interested in seeing how this works you're gonna have to wait till next week's episode where we put this to the test on our 125 crankshaft. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching, sticking with me. Thanks again for all your comments, your likes, your shares, your subscriptions. It really means a lot and it's helping to boost my channel. And also love the fact that I can help you guys whenever I can. So that's gonna do it for this one. Check in with me next week where we're gonna do this crankshaft rebuild. Take care.